Okay, so get this. Um, you know how steel is like super strong, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. But did you know that something like as light as a feather could be stronger? Hmm. Really? Yeah. That's that's like the magic of Kevlar. Oh, wow, Kevlar. And today, um, we're going to go deep into the story of its inventor, Stephanie Kwolek. Oh, yeah, she's amazing. I, I mean, it, it's just incredible. This is a material that has, you know, revolutionized so much, like, safety and technology. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. And and Stephanie Kwolek, she, she was a chemist who just, like, defied all these expectations and just changed the world with this invention. It's It's really interesting, too, like, you know her story it just it shows you like how how things that seem like completely unrelated can kind of come together yeah yeah you know what i mean because her father her father was a steel worker oh wow and and her mother was a seamstress so who would have thought that those two things would so somehow lead to kevlar it's true those influences like the strength of steel and then the flexibility of fabric those are like the very things that she combined in kevlar yeah so um, let's let's dive into um, Stephanie's early life. Okay, yeah. So imagine growing up in the 1920s in Pennsylvania. Okay. And you're you're surrounded by all this these steel mills, this industrial landscape, but then also you have this kind of delicate artistry of your mother's sewing. Mm. It's a pretty unique combination of influences. Yeah, yeah. Her father loved nature. He was really enthusiastic about it, and he instilled that in her, like exploring the outdoors and all that. Yeah, nice. And then her mother's passion for textiles, that kind of sparked an early fascination with materials. Yeah, it's amazing how, like, these really early experiences shape us. It's true, yeah. Even even as a child, like Stephanie was just so curious. Uh -huh. She like meticulously observed the world yeah. and even kept these really detailed notebooks. That's so cool. That like that inherent scientific curiosity, you know, yeah. it was there from the beginning. Yeah. Not surprising she got a chemistry degree. Yeah. Um graduated in 1946. Oh wow. But then life you know, life took a turn. Yeah. Medical school was her first, you know, ambition. Okay. But it was just, it was too expensive. Yeah. So she took what she thought was going to be just a temporary job mm. at DuPont, which mm. was a chemical company. And um, who knew that this decision that seems so small would just totally change her life yeah. and in history, you know? It makes you think, like, was it just chance or was, was it her scientific curiosity that led her there. Yeah, it's it's hard to say, right? Yeah, yeah, it's it's fascinating. So picture this. She's young, it's the 1940s, and she steps into this world of industrial chemistry mm. at DuPont. Yeah. And it was a field at that time dominated by men. Yeah, I can imagine it wasn't easy. No, no, it wasn't. Like, what were some of the challenges she faced being a woman in that field at that time? Oh, I mean, it, it was tough, you know? Women in science just, they faced so many hurdles. Yeah. And they had to, they really had to prove themselves. Yeah, I bet. Um, but Stephanie was determined, you know, she she didn't let that stop her. Yeah. She, she got assigned to this team and their task was to find a fiber. Okay. A lightweight fiber that could replace the steel used in tires. Wow. Do you imagine that? Like trying to find something lighter than steel, yeah. but still strong enough to be used in tires. Yeah, that's that's a huge challenge. Huge challenge. And a lot of, you know, experienced chemists, they couldn't figure it out. Yeah, so so this is where her years of careful observation, her patience, and her just like belief in herself yeah. really came in handy. Exactly. And after after years of research in 1964, breakthrough. 1964. It wasn't some big flashy experiment or anything. I don't know. It was just like a subtle observation. Yeah, that a lot of people probably would have missed. Yeah. Yeah. So picture this. You're in the lab, okay. surrounded by all these these beakers and flasks, right? And you you come across this this solution. And it's thin, it's cloudy, it's almost like, you know, you mess something up. Yeah. Most people would just toss it out. Yeah, totally. But not her. She she saw something mm. something that others didn't. Mm. And that's that's where her intuition, you know, that's where it really shines. Yeah. So instead of just dismissing it, this weird solution, yeah. she insisted on having it spun into a fiber. Oh wow. And that that was the key. Yeah. That decision. It revealed this material with with properties that that nobody expected. Yeah. Stronger than steel, but also super lightweight. Hmm. It was the birth of Kevrar. Wow. Yeah. It really was like yeah. a, a whole new era for materials. But yeah. you know, discovering it, that was just the first step. Yeah. Getting everyone else to like understand it yeah. and accept 
this totally new material. That was that was a whole other challenge. I bet. I mean, can you imagine like showing up to to your colleagues with this this cloudy weird mixture? Uh, oh yeah. They probably thought you like totally messed up the experiment. Yeah, they must have been like, "What is this? What did you do?" Holy. There was definitely some some doubt at first, especially I think um, from some of the the men. Really? Yeah, they they didn't they just couldn't believe that something so light yeah. could be stronger than steel. It's it's kind of sad that even after like this huge discovery, I know. You still had to like fight to be taken seriously. Yeah, it was it was really frustrating. Yeah. It it just shows you the the challenges that that women in science, you know, yeah. even when they're making these breakthroughs, they still had to like deal with all this. But yeah. but she didn't give up. That's great. No, she she kept you know, she she documented all her research so carefully, ran tons of tests and and really she advocated for Kevlar. Yeah. She believed in it. You know? It's so inspiring like that that resilience. Yeah. It's it, and eventually like everyone saw you know, they did. How amazing Kevlar was. Yeah, and and think about all the the possibilities it opened up. Like oh. before Kevlar, bulletproof vests were so bulky right. and stiff yeah. you couldn't move easily in them. But then all of a sudden you have this this lightweight, flexible protection. Mm -hmm. So many lives have been saved because of that. It's it's amazing how one invention can have such a huge impact. It really is. It's not even just like bulletproof vests, right? No, no, not at all. It's Helmets for like construction workers. Uh -huh. It's used in bridges, even spacecraft. Yeah, and airplanes. I mean, it's everywhere. It's everywhere. It's crazy. And and beyond just like you know keeping things safe and strong. Yeah. Kevlar is like in fiber optic tables. Oh wow. The ones that you know send all this data around the world. Yeah. It's even in in musical instruments. Really. Yeah. To make them you know last longer and sound better. So so it all started with this. This curiosity, yeah. this this experiment that people thought was a failure, right? And and trusting her gut, absolutely, yeah. It makes you think about like what we think of as success and failure. You know, it really does. Sometimes what seems like a mistake, yeah, turns out to be like this amazing discovery. Exactly, and and sometimes the people who who really change things are the ones who who aren't afraid to question everything. Totally, yeah. To go against like the. A normal way of thinking. So basically, innovation can come from anywhere. Yeah. And anyone. Anyone. But but it's not just about the idea itself, right? No. It's also about that that persistence. Absolutely. And not giving up. Yeah, Stephanie Kowalik, she didn't just you know discover this amazing thing. Yeah. She also had to like n navigate this whole world where, you know, men were in charge. Yeah. In fight to be recognized for her work. Yeah. And in the end, she really did change the world. Yeah. It's, it's not just about Kevlar itself. It's it's like a whole legacy. Exactly. But, yeah. You know, her life wasn't all about like the lab and experiments. Oh, right. Yeah. So she had other interests too. She did. Yeah. She loved gardening oh. and bird watching and, and she even designed and sewed her own clothes. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. She was like a really well-rounded person. It makes you think that maybe, maybe those things the things outside of science. Yeah. Maybe they, they influenced her work in ways we don't even realize. That's a good point. Yeah, it's it's like a reminder that scientists aren't just, you know, yeah. these these robots in the lab. Right. They have they have lives, you know, yeah. passions, hobbies and yeah. all those things. They affect how they see the world and right. how they how they think creatively. Yeah, it really makes you wonder like how all those things yeah. her love of nature her her attention to detail uh -huh. did did those like feed into her science somehow it's possible yeah but, but really i think what's so amazing about stephanie krolik yeah is her legacy oh absolutely it, it goes way beyond kevlar for sure you know it's it's about inspiring yeah. all these like future scientists yeah. especially like young women you know, to go into stem fields to to show them that that they can do it that, yeah. that they can excel in science totally and and be leaders in in innovation and and break those those old stereotypes yeah. that, that say like oh girls can't do science exactly exactly it's, it's like encouraging like little girls uh -huh. to to be curious yes to to look at the world like a scientist. To ask questions. Yeah, and to, to not let anyone tell them they can't do something. Yeah, and and I think it's it's also a challenge to all of us to mm. to make STEM more inclusive. Yeah. You know, a place where everyone feels welcome. Yeah, that's so important. To celebrate talent and and creativity, yeah. no matter who you are. So as we as we kind of wrap up this deep dive into Stephanie Kowalik's life, yeah. I think 
I think the big question is like, yeah, what's your Kevlar? What's your Kevlar moment? Yeah. Yeah. Like what's, what's that thing inside you that's right. just waiting to be discovered? It makes you think about all your, your own interests, right? Yeah. And, and how, how they might like unexpectedly combine. Totally. Like all those different passions. Yeah. They can lead to something amazing. Yeah. It's about like embracing those moments where you're like, what if? Yeah. Yeah. You know, those little th sparks of curiosity. It all goes back to Stephanie Kolick, right? Yeah. Like anyone could be an innovator. Absolutely. Anywhere. Anywhere. Anytime. It doesn't have to be in some fancy lab. No, no. It's it's about being curious. Yeah. And and trying things out. Experimenting. Yeah. And and not being afraid to like go for it. Even when people doubt you. Yeah. Even when people are like, no, that won't work. Yeah. Don't be afraid to challenge like the way things are. Yeah. To think differently. To think outside the box. To trust your gut. So to everyone listening, yeah. be bold. Be bold. Be curious. Yeah. Don't underestimate yourself. Don't underestimate the power of, of one little idea. Who knows? You you might just be the next Stephanie Quality. You could be the next one to, to change an industry or even even save lives. That's it for our deep dive into the the amazing Stephanie Quality. The inventor of Kevlar. Yeah, the brilliant chemist. We we hope you've you've enjoyed it. Yeah. And and maybe even found some inspiration. Keep asking questions. Keep diving. Keep deep. diving deep. Well, until next time. Bye everyone.